Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Car Suspension, Over 120 Years of Ride and Handling. What I want to do in today's video is talk about the best way of understanding suspension stiffness. Why? Because suspension stiffness is integral, fundamental to understanding car suspension in terms of both ride and handling. Let's take a look. So how do you think of suspension stiffness? If someone describes how stiff the suspension is in their car, what do you ask them? And you might say, well, what, what spring rates are you running? And they might say, oh, 500 pounds an inch front springs and you know, 450 pounds an inch rear springs. And you might go, oh yeah, okay. But in fact, that has told you almost nothing. Why? Well, for a start, yeah, measured spring rates sound good, but they don't tell you about the actual spring rate at the wheel. Why? Because it depends on motion ratio. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, think of a strut. Whether you've got a vertical spring or near vertical mounted very close to the wheel. The relationship between wheel movement in bounce and spring compression will be very close. If the wheel compresses upwards by 6 inches, the spring might compress upwards by 5.9. Very, very close. That's almost a 1 to 1 motion ratio. Okay. In that case, the spring stiffness and the stiffness of the wheel movement is about the same. But what about different suspension types? What about double wishbones? What about semi-trailing arms? What about multi-link suspension? There, the spring's not right against the wheel, but it's inwards towards the pivot point a lot more. And in that case, specifying the spring rate does not tell you anything like what the wheel rate actually is. The two are completely different. All right, so measured spring rates, unless you are comparing exactly the same type of car, don't tell you much. Well, what about doing the spring rate at the wheel? What's called the wheel rate? That tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? Well, no, wheel rates aren't any good either because they don't take into account the weight that's acting through the spring. For a given spring and a given motion ratio, the more weight acting downwards, the softer the suspension will behave. And so spring rates don't tell you much and uh, wheel rates don't tell you much. Oh, okay, well, what else can I do? Well, natural frequency. Natural frequency takes into account the stiffness of the spring. It takes into account the motion ratio, and it takes into account the weight acting through the spring. Okay, well, what is this natural frequency thing? It's best illustrated by a diagram like this. Now, here we have a spring, here, vertically aligned, we have a weight that's placed on top of the spring and then we push down on the weight and we let go. And what happens is the weight bounces up and down on the spring at what is called the system's natural frequency. And if we track the movement of those ups and downs over time, we get a waveform that looks like this. Now, the distance between that part of the wave and that part of the wave or the peak to peak or the trough to trough that distance, that's one cycle occurring. And if it's one cycle going up and down per second, we call that one hertz. If it goes up and down twice in a second, we call that two hertz. So hertz is cycles per second. Now, the softer the suspension, the lower the natural frequency. Let's take a look at that. And I want to give you at least some guide before we go any further. But as we'll see, this is awfully generalized and in many cases wrong. A soft riding car might have a natural frequency between one and one and a half hertz. A sporting car riding more firmly might have a natural frequency of two to two and a half hertz. So the lower the natural frequency, the softer the suspension system, the higher the natural frequency, the stiffer the suspension system. It allows us as a universal yardstick to compare across all sorts of different cars and even not cars, different vehicles as well. So let's start off by looking at a buggy. An 1890s horse-drawn buggy that I cover in my book. I measure the natural frequency of the suspension in bounce, and it was around 1.8 to 2 hertz, depending on the load that the vehicle was carrying. Okay, so we can apply this idea right back to uh, well over 120 years ago. Hmm. Now, what about one of the most uh, important cars in terms of suspension ever developed, the 1901 Lanchester. Why was it so important? It was the first car that actually had scientifically designed suspension. You can see how much deflection it was able to uh, cope with, and you can also see how stiff the body was. Anyway, natural frequency, 1.4 hertz in bounce. 
so a little bit softer than the buggy we saw a moment ago. The Ford Model T came out in 1908, a measured natural frequency and bounce of two hertz, so closer to the sporting car end of things, if you like. Then we get to cars that are just incredibly impressive. 1948 Citroen 2CV, interconnected front rear suspension, the front right wheel connected to the uh, rear right wheel, connected down the sides of the car. Why is that important? Because the natural frequency now depends on whether it's a two wheel bump, both of those wheels going up, or only a one wheel bump. In two wheel bumps, about 1.4 hertz. But in one wheel bumps, it'll be a lot softer than that. The natural frequency will be lower. And of course, one wheel bumps are what you normally experience on the road. What about another stunning car, a stunning suspension system on this car, Packard torsion level ride, interconnected front rear by means of torsion bars, as opposed to the links used on the 2CV. 1955, just 0.9 hertz natural uh, frequency in bump, uh, two wheel bumps that is. Again, one wheel bumps will be even softer. A supremely comfortable ride, just drifting across the ground. And there's some marvelous videos showing it doing exactly that. The wheels going up and down and the car body just staying perfectly level. And then we get to things like the hydro pneumatic suspension of the 1970 Citroen GS, a similar sort of system to that uh, introduced something like uh, 20 years earlier uh, in the DS. But look at the natural frequency in bump, 0.65 hertz. We're, we're, we're talking about a different league of suspension softness to those other cars. And so Citroens have been renowned for their ride and you can see why the natural frequency is, is just stunningly low. But then look at cars like this, renowned for their handling, and if you read the original road test, the ride quality as well. 1992 McLaren F1, front natural frequency 1.4 hertz, rear natural frequency 1.75 hertz. And for the first time, we're looking at the fact that front and rear suspension systems have different uh, natural frequencies in bounce, something a point I cover in much more detail in my book. Why is it set up like that? Primarily to reduce pitch. There is a relationship between front and rear natural frequencies that gives the least pitch. It was a relationship developed in 1901 and still being used today in cars such as this and of course current cars as well. And then we get to some really interesting ones. 1997 C5 Corvette, front natural frequency and bounce around 1.15 hertz, incredibly soft. In sportier FE3 spec mode, it rose slightly to 1.2 hertz. The back much stiffer, 1.36 hertz or 1.45 hertz in FE3. So actually, surprisingly soft uh, suspension, but of course, this sort of car has very, very firm dampers. And that was a choice the suspension engineers made to use the damping to control uh, sudden suspension movements rather than having stiff springs. It's all in the book. Car suspension over 120 years of ride and handling. I cover a lot more cars than I've covered here. And wherever possible, I actually quote the natural frequencies in bounce for those cars. And incidentally, why do I say in bounce? Well, you can also measure natural frequencies in pitch, and you can also measure natural frequencies in roll. And then when you've got them in bounce, pitch, and roll, you get a really good idea of what the car's actually doing in terms of its uh, sprung behavior. All in the book, car suspension over 120 years of ride and handling, available from Amazon in your country. Thank you.